Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the NXT review for March 8, 2011. Um, things are still abysmal on this show with it being elimination style, but we'll run through it anyway. Maurice continues to host these, uh, or co-host these uh, rookies, and we have um, various people making their way out, including Chavo Guerrero, who basically calls out all of the lack of professionalism that's there. Tyson Kidd makes his way out. He's also kind of wanting different opportunities. Uh, Yoshitatsu is here. Basically, JTG. We've got a bunch of new, uh, I guess, pros and kind of uh, going in a direction of uh, challenging new things or trying new things. Um, luckily, the um, changes that are coming are up here, and ultimately, uh, we see different things uh, forthcoming out of things here. And I mean, ultimately, I guess you could say that the season five has begun, and that's where everything begins. Uh, they're still doing the redemption thing. They're still trying to get something out of this uh, elimination style. Uh, Chavo Guerrero is the pro for a returning Darren Young. And Jacob Novak is the has uh, JTG, so Young and Novak are in there. And I mean, honestly, I can't imagine anyone cares after they how they performed in previous seasons. Uh, lots of grappling for, I guess you'd say, position, for lack of a better term. Uh, Novak has a good look, but that's about it. Doesn't really have natural charisma anyway. Back elbow, and he takes. A really basic match and turns it okay. Young comes back around and actually does a spin around punch and a power slam that looks pretty good. So that at least is there. The run here is a little bit of a uh, enjoyable thing. Then we kind of see ultimately a, a back elbow and a kick right under the chin uh, attempted by Young. Doesn't get him nearly where he wants to get to. Close line in the corner and then... Uh, Novak brings him out, kicks him right in the face, and JTG is happy enough with his pro, although he's not nearly as animated as one would expect. There's a little bit of brawling and a short cutoff by uh, Young. Uh, flirtation soon thereafter as the other pros are watching on near fall by Novak and kind of a drive into the knee. Novak eventually takes the loss to Darren Young, uh, and that's about 14 minutes into the program, so good for him. Yoshitatsu is here. Yoshitatsu is uh, flirting with Maurice. Up walks his, his rookie, Byron Saxton, and Byron is not um, doing all that well because he interrupts uh, the attempt of flirtation between Maurice and good old uh, good old Yoshitatsu Yoshitatsu the guy I didn't even really remember basically they're doing this as a redemption style show uh, Connor O'Brien talks about how he uh, didn't really get to show himself the last time through basically says he was doing a gimmick persona and that he's going to show his real colors this time boot camp, boot camp obstacle course is up next, and they waste a good bit of time with this. Um, basically, you know, I mean, the, you know, they do the, the running around the ring, pushing of obstacles and the like. And for the most part, all of the pros in the season are uh, run into the ground by Darren Young, who ends up winning the. Obstacle Horse, even after having a match, which is just goofy, we go to highlights of Raw, which also take up way too much time in the program. Then we go Titus O'Neil and Lucky Cannon up as the main event for this particular week's program. Uh, and they're given about, well, say about eight minutes, everything included. Um, Byron Saxton also gets a highlight piece basically talking about how he... Uh, wants to be more focused, wants to prove his value. Uh, Tyson Kidd out here 
with Lucky Cannon, um, which is an interesting run. I had forgotten how good Tyson Kidd, who did get injured, uh, was in the ring. Just kind of an interesting run there. Um, needless to say, Titus O'Neil and Lucky Cannon have wrestled before. I don't quite understand the hairstylings of one. Um, uh, Tyson Kidd at this point in his particular career choice, but it's here. Uh, Titus O'Neil uses power early, gets his man driven back into the corner. Hornswoggle is, is O'Neill's pro, which is kind of ends up being comedic for the the duration of a season, but it's certainly goofy. I'm about 31 uh, of the 67 episodes into the season, so lots of content should be going up in the next few days. Anyway, Lucky Cannon tries to kick and punch at his guy, doesn't really get what he wants on it because the match is really slow. Titus O'Neill, who is older at the time, I think late 30s, early 40s even here, uh, is showing muscular definition, but maybe not showing a lot of um, non-basic skill set. Uh, Hornswoggle watching on from outside the ring. Tyson Kidd tries to get in Hornswoggle's face and interfere. Tyson Kidd then goes into the ring and chases after Hornswoggle, or tries to chase after Hornswoggle. The ref cuts him off. Lucky Kenny goes to the top rope, ends up botching himself, and uh, Hornswoggle gets uh, assaulted in the middle here, and ultimately uh, a attempted uh, submission hold by Lucky Cannon, but he ends up getting hit with the Sky High Power Bomb, and uh, O'Neill gets the victory. As we close the show for this particular week, we'll be back with more right after this.